That was very common back in the day. <laughs> common name. Yes, it was. <laughs> All right, we got Joseph ready to go. We have Dio, awesome. Hey guys. So Dio, don't get in an accident. No, my wife's driving. Oh, good, okay. <laughs> Well, we're glad to have you both on in transit. Hi, Ivy. Good morning. <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, how's school going, Dio? School is going awesome. So far, awesome. every day has been a true blessing. Good. Good, good, good. And how are you doing, Joseph? Good? All right, I get the thumbs up. Where's Max today? Matt? Max. Oh, he's looking for us. He's, he's gonna, if, we'll see if he makes a guest appearance. Yep. Yeah, I don't know where Matt is. I should probably, I'll text him and see. Uh, I text him. Oh, you did? Yeah. All right. Then I won't bug him if he's trying to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Wow, it's just unbelievable that we're halfway through September already. <laughs> I know. It's gone so fast. We had a retirement party for some guys yesterday that we did that I've been doing business with for over 30 years. And uh it was quite the you know, just uh, uh interesting to think about. I've been doing business with these guys more than half my life. <laughs> so wow. I know. Good and they're friends. They're good, good guys. As are all you. Great to see everybody. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait for that retirement day. I'm hoping someday it comes. Oh, I'm for you? Sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's actually going to. I know it might uh, be. It'll be good. We'll see. Dee Dee. Hi, Dee Dee. Good morning. Good to see you. So we have to see your hair so short. <laughs> it's going back now. <laughs> a couple more We're months. Have to get a call pretty soon. <laughs> like a little little cat, a little boy. Actually, you to wear your hair like that when you were a child. I mean, right? Didn't you wear kind mm -hmm. of a clear cut for many years? Mostly when I got in trouble, mom would make me cut my hair, <laughs> 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 which was a lot. <laughs> so, hey, I John. Just, Good to see you. So How's just for everybody this morning. Oh, there's Max. Sure. He makes his appearance. Hey, Max. What a good guy. But just to let everybody know, uh, we are on Facebook and we welcome our Facebook friends that join on. And uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that these are also being put on YouTube. So, um, if you ever wanted to check it out again, you can always go to, I think you can go to YouTube. I'll have to figure out what channel it is, but we'll connect that with our, our website at some point. Good. And hi, good Andrew. Morning, Andrew. Yeah. Good to see morning, you. Faithways.com. Uh, yeah, www.faithways.com. Right, okay, good I'll to check see you. that out. Hey, Lori, speaking of people who used to have long hair, but it, it looks <laughs> good, right? I, I don't know. I, Lori and I are I like it. For, for long hair here. You I know. I, ago, Lance. Yeah, Lance totally shaved his head just to be shorter than me. It's all about competition. <laughs> Lori, is that your new house? No, this is uh, this is actually mom's condo in, uh, we're in Borrego Springs. <laughs> Oh, nice. um, and so this is her condo. Um, it's just the most beautiful and like perfect little spot right nestled in among the um, San Isidro and uh, Santa Ana Mountains, just absolutely stunning. And um, yeah, so we've had we've had bighorn sheep come literally up to the sliding glass door oh in the gosh. last couple of days. Yeah, so it's wow. it's really cool. We're very lucky to be here. We're waiting until we own a house to move. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, I think, uh, Karen, uh, that we're all we're on on all the way I around. I think we are here. Oh. All right. I don't know where Joseph, mother... do you want to start us off? Well, hang on one sec. What I'm going to do oh. is um, I'm going to mute everybody. Uh, actually, I'll just do it individually. So go ahead, Max Joseph. Just going to start us off. Okay. Good morning, everyone. All right, Joseph, take it away. That was the uh, that was the dog's ology. I couldn't think of a I couldn't think of a cat pun fast enough, but I did think of a dog pun. I guess the dog, the dogsology would have been woof, 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 woof. Well, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Ah, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to do another one. Ah, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah, well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Hey, Amen. Thanks, Joseph. You got us going this morning in a big way. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's so good to see everybody here today. And um, we're going to have a special lineup from Dio to start us off with our opening prayer. So Dio, take it away. Amen. It's so it's such a blessing to be here with everybody this morning. Um, it's so beautiful out. Uh, the air is this warm and awesome. If everybody can just bring their wandering minds together as I read this for you. Heavenly Father, we wake up and open our eyes, taking in the crisp air. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for walking with us through every step as we try to make our way back to you through our trials and tribulations. You're the only one who knows what we have been through, Lord. You know the real, the real, the realness in us. Isaiah 40 and 29 says, what we require is spiritual strength to endure faithfully. We are the ones who faint and grow weary. In verse 29, the Lord promises to provide strength to us. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might. He increases strength. The power is within us to overcome all things that hold us. Psalms 119 and 133 states, order my steps in thy words and let not any iniquity have dominion over us. My friends, believe in your heart, believe in your soul, feel God's love touching you, your warm hand, and walk with me out of despair and hardship to a peaceful life of love and harmony. To our divine love, we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for creating that beautiful prayer, Dio. That's a terrific way to start off our morning. Ann and Tim, it's good to see you. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to move on here with our affirmation for today. Are you churched or unchurched? Are you one of those seekers or are you one of those cynics like me? Are you a sinner or a saint? Are you gay, straight, 
or otherwise, rich or poor, healthy or sick, if you are lost or you are found, if you are any of those, you are absolutely welcome here. So let's practice today together. Amen. And Lance, I believe you have our Amen. sacred space. Thank you so much for creating such a gorgeous space for us today. Yeah, Complete well, with the beautiful thank background. you. Uh, thanks, Karen. Yeah, Shana, thanks for the flowers. And I think a few of you will see things that you might recognize in these pictures. Good morning, Anne, and good morning, Chris. Good morning. Uh, good morning. There's, uh, so what I wanted to, I, I, had a, I had a lunch with Joseph this week, which was a great blessing and always fun to get together. And I learned something about Joseph, which was that he'd been getting involved in some uh, Hindu music. And, um, you know, I think it was uh, really, um, uh, it was really great to hear and to talk about. And I'm really excited for the day when he is able to share that with us. And, and, he, and he's talked about that a little bit. But what it really reminded me of, and I know that like, you know, Chris has been involved, Chris Kerr has been involved with Jan Mocha, who's getting on right now. And they've been involved in like a spiritual journey and, 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 and you know, sort of uh, practicing their faith amongst many faiths. And um, so what I really wanted our uh, space to represent today was the idea of that we can be fearless in and open to other uh, faiths that uh, people of faith are, um, are the people that we wanna line ourselves up with, um, especially if they're into this non-duality, which means like that basically there isn't just one way to do this. It's not black and white, that this mystery is beyond us and to be able to embrace the mystery. Mm. And so if you look at our space today, um, we have a candle, which I'll light. Um, there's a carving, which is a carving of the globe, the, 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 of the globe of the world. And I got that in Uganda. Then there's a mandala, which is one I'm pretty sure that Jan made uh, for my um, ordination. And then uh, there's a cross that says it was 250 on the back. So my sister gave me this cross. I'm pretty sure it's pesos. I, at least I hope it's pesos. <laughs> it was dollars. Thank you, Lori. But uh, no, either way, it was beautiful. And then, um, you know, just a heart, which really sums it all up, right? The heart brings it all together. And so just to, um, and of course, the beautiful flowers and everything else. So in our sacred space today, to just be reminded that, you know, we're not afraid of other faiths. We shouldn't be. We should embrace other faiths. We should love people of different faiths. And we should encourage people when they're, when they want to grow spiritually to go in different directions and just trust that either they're going to go and find nirvana or they're going to um, go and then maybe come back. And that's what we hope for just because we like to have people together. So anyway, today's for people of all faiths. And may it be so, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. 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 Joseph, I think, do you have our human doxology today? Lance is going to put it up on the screen. Oh, we're already at the doxology? We are. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'll do is I'm going to invite, uh, or Joseph will, will invite everyone to sing along, and I'm going to uh, mute everyone and I'll put it on the screen so we can uh, we can share it. So <clears throat> bear with me here. It's gotta find it. <clears throat> praise God, praise God, praise God from him. Praise him, Lord Jesus. Praise him above ye holy host. Praise God. All right, I'll just fake it. Oh, I, I, I um, <laughs> I, you know, uh, in, this is the dogsology, but actually, uh, Max wanted to do the cat a So there you go. Just thought of it. Praise, 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures. All creatures. Flow. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Joseph. I love to hear different versions of how people do it because I think that it really adds a lot to the diversity of, of all of the people who sing this doxology to, to remind us just how good God is. So thanks so much for doing that today, Joseph. So I want to do a quick check-in to see where everyone is at this week and where you're seeing God working where you would like to see God working. Uh, I know for myself, I'll start it off by just saying I've been really increasingly aware of what's going on in Ukraine again and struggling a, a lot with what is being found and what is being uncovered, but also filled <clears throat> with a sense of hope that this, is, this situation is going to move in a positive direction for all parties concerned. So um, just trying to, ah. to keep keep the hope going and keep the prayers going. Anybody else? Christina. Okay. In our community we had we had a banana split night last night. Okay. Nice. It, it it yeah it was all right. Um, me and dad went. And uh, we had to pay five dollars a piece, but that's okay because it goes into the goes into the farm. But um, my sister and her husband came, but didn't talk to us and sat at the table where the HOA president was and this and that. And, um, I actually went towards where the trash cans are, which is where the president was sitting. At at that table, they were sitting at. And he says, nice eagle, because we got the eagle for the stump this past week. And we put the white fence back up, so I might put a picture of it on Facebook. And uh, I said, yeah. And my si I look over at my sister, and she's shaking her head like this. Ah, oh. even though we weren't spoken to, the, um, the air in the room wasn't uncomfortable, which gives me hope that possibly my sister will start talking to me again. I, I really hope that that happens. I pray it happens. And where I've seen God this week, other than that, is I have a conversation with him all day long. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. My mind is on him. And then I get into my music that I told you about, Karen. Okay, and I love that station. It gets me a lot closer to God, and that's where I want to be. So it's been a good week so far. God bless, and it's nice to see everybody, all your smiling faces. Thank you so much. Good to hear. Anybody else? Deb. Hi, everyone. Um, I think this is a good segue from what uh, Christina was saying. Um, I try, I said, I got to talk this week. It's very, I, I, it's not the easiest thing for me to do so, but I know it, I have to, I got to push through it. <laughs> but, um, so the, um, I, the question I've, I've had for a while is like faith, you know, how do you, how do you get more faith? You know, like what, how, how do I increase my faith? And I've, having conversations with people and, and folks are saying, I've heard, um, you know, being intentional, being more intentional about it. So what is, what does that mean? Right? Like does helping someone or um, maybe praying, you know, so I've been thinking about that. And so I kind of like, there was this one situation this week where I was meeting with a couple, I do couples counseling and can be challenging, but also really rewarding helping people work things out. And, and then on the other side, sometimes they don't work out, but that can be for the best too. Um, but this one session was really hard and there was a lot of emotion and it's like, 
you know, I get suddenly get overwhelmed with that feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm an imposter. What the heck am I doing? I, you know, this, these people are going to get divorced and it's going to be my fault and you know, all that. And so, um, I just kind of said, okay, so I'm going to try this intentional thing. I did this silent prayer, you know, like, oh God, please help me, you know, with this. And, and I, you know, it, it's not like they went happily ever after into the sunset, but I felt a shift. I felt like a shift, like I'm not in charge here. I'm not, you know, so I think it was really good for me not to feel like totally responsible for this, that it's not, it, it, it's, it's about, you know, God, really, maybe I'm the vehicle where I can help. But um, anyway, I don't know if that sounds like I'm doing the right thing for increasing my faith, but I'll keep trying. But I think Christina talking and being so conscious of God and that um, made a lot of sense to me too. Anyway, <laughs> hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that, Deb. That's really cool. um, I, it's, it's amazing what happens when we show up and leave it to God to do the work. Great. All right. Tina, did I see your hand up? Yes. Thank you, but thank like you for the flowers, ask, by the way. That's oh, you're welcome. I'd like to ask for prayers for my daughter's dog, Bojangles. He's in the need of emergency care, and Maddie's very upset and afraid. She asked for our prayers. Absolutely. You can absolutely do that. Anybody else? Tim, it looks like you were, you're doing pretty well. And I see that you're asking for prayers for the growing immigrant community. And absolutely, I think we need to learn to welcome them more. And, um, you know, we saw in the news this week of how that happened in uh, Martha's Vineyard and yeah. saw how that whole thing unfolded. And I, so yes. Yeah all of it we, we absolutely need mm -hmm. to learn to do this better karen i have some i have a quick uh, well yeah. i have one Don't so worry. good morning everyone um so i i don't know if i necessarily see god in this but i had this experience that was pretty intense which was that i had taken my wife and her friend uh and i had taken my boat and dropped them off on a beach and I needed to pull the boat off the beach to anchor it. And then I was going to swim in and, and, and go hang out with them. And um, as they got off and got to the beach and I saw some minnows and I uh, pulled a little fishing pole I have on my boat and I took a couple casts and I didn't get anything. And so I changed my lure and I took another cast and I locked onto this, <laughs> this monster fish that I had to fight for about 15 minutes. Um, got it in, had no way of taking pictures or anything, but I, and I let it go. It was a beautiful albacore fish. Um, and then I, I got in the water and I swam in and went to meet up with Shana and her girlfriend. And then um, later that afternoon, I, I said, you know, I'm gonna go just take a little walk and check on the boat. And as I climbed this big rock to look down on my boat, I looked down, I realized that the anchor was no longer holding. And so that my, and the current was very fast and the current was ripping my boat out into the ocean, basically. And um, it was just a lot of panic and uh, not, not really panic, but um, you know, just what do you do? So I ran down, I got, you know, Shana's phone, which none of it, we, we, there's no cell reception out there. And uh, there was just a lot of running around up and down this stone mountain. And we finally flagged down a uh, fishing boat and had him, uh, he made me swim out to his boat and bring it back. So we were able to save it and everything and everything was fine, but um, it was just a, it was a big adventure. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, you know, God's there with me all the time. I, I don't know that God was there helping rescue my boat or not, but uh, anyway, it was certainly the experience is, is one I wanted to share with you as my my fam, my faith family. It was fun, fun to share with you guys. So thank you for that. 
do. And I and see. Yeah. yeah. And. Oh yeah. I was just going to piggyback on what Lance just said. Who do you think it was that got you up there on the mountain at that particular time? Yeah. I know. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Christina. I saw something this week on Facebook that a friend of mine shared, and all it said was, God is everywhere, so pray everywhere. <laughs> Amen. Amen. John, I think I saw your hand up. Uh, um, buddy, a couple of things. My mother, I uh, was actually able to reach her over the phone, and, and uh, apparently her nephew came down and helped her with her phone yesterday, and she can't. <laughs> So she she can't she can't open the phone now. So <laughs> she can't get on. But she sends her love and tells everybody that she misses her. Um, secondly, uh, I got to see God bright and early this morning. I had bought some peanuts from the store and brought them home all excited. And, and uh, lo and behold, when I woke up this morning, uh, a couple of squirrels were out in the backyard, kind of foraging and I threw two or three big handfuls of, of uh, peanuts out there and it was just one of those moments to see those little beautiful creatures running around and and collecting the the peanuts and getting just right and then running off to their to a tree and up the tree and then off over the fence and up to wherever they live and it was just a, a moment of great beauty to me and i was so conscious of god and all that he brings to our lives in that moment the the other thing i just wanted to mention really quick and i've been struggling a little bit you know just trying to be more present with god and that's hard for me sometimes and one of the things i'm trying to do and it's been about three days now is um decided I would try to find a place where uh, where I can really kind of try to focus on God. And that, I decided, at least for now, is going to be the local park by my house. And so the last two days, uh, I've gone over to the park, uh, no music, no podcasts, um, just me and, and God and other people. And, um, and it, I haven't been really great at it but it's i think it takes practice and and i'm getting better and that time for me is time for me with god and uh and i think i will see how it goes but it's at least a, a try and uh and so i wanted to share that with you all thanks thanks so much thanks john thanks christina did i miss anybody i think we're good all right. So I so much appreciate all of you sharing. I, I just think it adds so much to the community when we can help lift each other up with all of our stories. Um, and it, it's just amazing because you, you see how many ways God can be present in, in people's lives. It just never ceases to amaze me. So in celebration of that, Andrew, do you have a song for us? Good, good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, Karen, I have a song. Let's see.
All right. Hey, thanks, Andrew. And uh, man, music is such a big part of what we do. Um, friends, I wanted to share what we, what we call our words of assurance, words of assurance. And th this one just sort of struck a chord with me. It's actually an old poem slash prayer from a guy named Thomas Merton. And they call it the Merton Prayer. Uh, and it's from a book called Thoughts in Solitude. It goes like this. And uh, I will share with you that with a lot of sickness going on amongst family and friends, uh, a lot of, you know, I, I can relate so much to what I was hearing this morning uh, from Deb as a professional too, and the, some of the doubts that go on in our minds. I thought this prayer would be good for maybe for all of us. So let's give it a try. My Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, will I trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. And I say, amen. Please join me in that. Amen. Thank you to Thomas Merton. Now, that was written in the mid-50s. So uh, it's amazing how these great thoughts can be shared so many years later and still still matter and be pertinent. Um, good morning and welcome, Bab. If you're wondering where your sister is, she uh, is unable to get on today with some technical difficulties. But uh, we're not great to have you. Uh, Karen, would you uh, would you yep. read, read our scripture, please? Please. Absolutely. All right. Listen, all. Hear these words from Apostle Paul's letter to the Church of the Philippians. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love yeah. and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. Mm -hmm. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. To our God, our Father, be glory and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Karen. Uh, I'm going to just do a mute all and get back on track here. So, Ray, well, it's, and again, thank friends, we uh, invite, we mute you, but not because we don't love you. We want to hear from you. So, afterwards, we'll have a chance to share. So when I was a kid, uh, probably junior high school, uh, and I, I really didn't like school, but though I really remember Ponce de Leon. And Ponce de Leon was sort of the first Spaniard who ended up in Florida. And what I remember about Ponce de Leon was that he was searching for the fountain of youth. And um, that's, I don't know how else I ever would have remembered about Ponce de Leon, but that. And I was kind of intrigued with this whole idea of the fountain of youth. Now, you remember, I was 
probably less than 13 at the time, but uh, somehow I thought the idea of the Fountain of Youth was kind of an interesting thing. For those of you who don't know, the Fountain of Youth, it, it was considered a, a, like a spring of water, which would promise to restore youth to anyone who drank it or bathed in it or anything like that. Um, and so, you know, it was a it was a pretty neat thing. And for those who were looking for the Fountain of Youth, the Fountain of Youth was kind of considered that one thing, that one thing they needed for happiness, the one thing that would bring them to where they needed to be. And it was easy, right? It was something that, you know, all you had to do is drink out of it. All you, had, you didn't have to be anything other than able to drink or, uh, or take a bath. And we're both, most of us are pretty good at both of those things. So the Fountain of Youth from that standpoint was really intriguing. I think it also helped me remember who Ponce de Leon was. Um, but it, it seems like, and what, I, what, I'm, what I'm hearing today, and you know, especially, I don't know why, Deb, but what you spoke about res resonated so well with me today about this whole idea of like, you know, how do we do this? And you know, John's talking about this. How do we grow along spiritual lines? How do we grow our faith, right? Because it always seems like we're looking for that one thing, right? We're looking for that one thing that's going to make us happy and it's going to give us purpose and it's going to stave off our pain and it'll bring us power and energy and hope and peace and light. That one thing. Last week during our sermon, uh, Karen shared a message with, with us from the Gospel of Luke. And it, it, was, a, it was a parable. It, it was a parable, one of two. There were back-to-back -back parables. And it was, the first one was about the, uh, the fella who had lost one of his 100 sheep. And he, he dropped everything to go find his sheep. Um, in our weekly devotional this week, if you read it, um, it, was a, it was the second parable from Luke. And the second parable from Luke is about the, a woman who has her coins and she's lost one coin. And so... Uh, both of these parables have a, a, some com commonality, which I, I think is very important. And remember, parables are Jesus' stories to help teach us, right, and others. And so uh, looking for their common elements can be really helpful. So the first is, you know, lost and found for sure, right? That, that's one of the, one of the common elements. And, and there, there may be many more. But one of the common elements is often not really focused on in this in these parables, but it was focused on by Paul in our in today's reading. And that is upon finding the sheep and upon finding the lost coin, both of these people said, rejoice with me. The man who lost the sheep said, rejoice with me. I have found the sheep. And the woman who found the coin said, rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which I had lost. For Jesus, it's really clear the response of rejoicing. And then Paul in his letter to the church of the Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice always rejoice in the Lord. This is a very powerful mantra. You know, today we're talking about people of other faiths, and we know that other faiths have mantras. Well, we have mantras too. And this mantra that Jesus is laying up for us and just handing to us is rejoice in the Lord. But it goes, more, it's, it's even more than that. Rejoice always. Rejoice in the Lord. In one version uh, in the Bible, um, sometimes you look at different versions just to see what the language says. In one version, instead of saying rejoice, it says celebrate. Celebrate instead of rejoice. Celebrate in the Lord. Other words that might be uh, used synonymous with rejoice might be to delight. Delight in the Lord. Or also to have great joy in God. How often, friends, do you in your life, rejoice. How often is it when you're feeling tired or overworked, do you rejoice? How often when you're stressed or anxious, do you rejoice? Can you even imagine rejoicing when you're sick 
or even worse yet, to rejoice when either a child or a family member is sick. The call, though, is to rejoice in the Lord always. Jesus and Paul see this as a simple gateway. This is, the, this is sort of the one thing. It sounds almost too easy. Rejoice, the one thing. I'm a little bit of a news junkie. I, I watch, I, I, I do my news feed and I read way too much news and it's redundant and it's, it's just horrible. And I was asking myself as I was doing this sermon and, and trying to you know, go through this whole idea of rejoicing is how can I rejoice when all I see is disturbing news? It's hard, maybe impossible. The simple fact is you cannot hate and rejoice in God. It just simply can't be done. You cannot be self-consumed. Even if you're sick. And rejoice in God. It can't be done. You cannot at the same time be full of anxiety. And be rejoicing in God. One or the other fits into the vessel. In place of hate, we put this rejoicing in God. In place of fear and anxiety, we should try to rejoice in God. When we're feeling a little self-consumed or when we're playing God as we sometimes try to do, we won't be happy unless we are able to turn it around and do that by rejoicing in God. We rejoice in God in many ways. Um, I know John mentioned it today. We find different ways to do it. But this idea, if you feel yourself going down that road of, of hate, if you feel yourself going down that road of dissatisfaction, of hunger that is, that is not going to quench you, if you feel yourself going down that road of trying to find a different way to be happy you may be missing that that place to just be able to stop yourself when you're at those crossroads and to recognize where you are it's it's of course not easy i think we talked about this last week when we're when we're suffering or when somebody we know is suffering or when we're when we're financially burdened or when we're feeling lonely or tired or hungry it's not easy, but that's when we need to turn, turn the story around, rejoice in God. To me, rejoice is yes, to celebrate, it's to delight in God, it's to have great joy in God, and it's also to have immense gratitude for everything that is around us, to be in love with life. Turn that thing which keeps us downtrodden and celebrate life celebrate our heritage which is kind of what brings us to christianity sometimes celebrate creation and celebrate god's power and celebrate god's love for you and for all others now one thing i want to point out about the two parables that jesus was sharing he doesn't just say Rejoice. Remember, the shepherd says, rejoice with me. And the woman doesn't just say rejoice. She says, rejoice with me. You guys delight me when you rejoice with me in faith ways. I was delighted this past week when I got a chance to spend time with Joseph, have lunch together. It was a, it was a celebration. Those are the kind of things that bring me close to God. And the same thing for you. Come to faith ways. Make this part of your practice, part of your celebration, part of your rejoicing in God. It will change your life. It doesn't take much. Just, just be mindful and intentional. Rejoice in God. Come to faith ways. Rejoice with us and rejoice in the Lord together. Amen. Friends, let us pray. Take a deep breath. A holy parent, 
we rejoice in your presence in our lives. We are delighted and full of joy that you are with us. We celebrate this and open our eyes and hearts and souls to you with eternal rejoicing. Amen. And uh, it was really neat to see how these different things all came together for me anyway. Uh, so I hope you got something out of that. Um, yeah, so I guess we could use a song. Uh, anybody? I got a song. I got a song, Lance. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks for your message, by the way. That was, uh, that was good. I think this song is, uh, might be fitting for, uh, for that. It's called Sanctuary. It's an oldie, but a goodie. Two, three. fun well we unfortunately we didn't get our our music group together this week we had some uh emergencies come up but uh anyway we've been talking a little bit and thinking about it and um i hope you guys uh, you know music is definitely a way to rejoice in the lord for sure so thank you for that andrew and it was nice to see dio and and uh joseph on there you guys were kind to let me join in with you uh, so friends this is our time of faith abundance i have uh there, it's kind of an open space for a few things. One is to re possibly reflect on what you heard. Um, also a chance, I uh, have some prayers on our list, but a chance to lift up uh, things in prayer. I absolutely lift up those with COVID of which I think we have a few who are uh, ailing from it right now. Um, but, uh, and then also just to uh, continue to share um, your faith experience. So uh, it's open. I invite you to raise your hand. The only thing I'll say is that we prefer no crosstalk, which just means that you only lift up what you're talking about and we just honor whatever anybody else says. Yes, Lisa. I have a sheep story. Um, a few weeks ago, my little dog, Micah, took off out the door during that horrible thunderstorm we had. He's tremendously afraid of thunder and lightning. So why running outside was an answer to him, I don't know. Um, could not find him. He did not come back home. It was, it went, uh, that was a Tuesday and, and we got to the weekend and you know, if it's after so many days, you kind of have to say, well, I guess hopefully he's somewhere safe. Um, but then I posted it on the South Hadley Granby community page and all these people were telling me where they've seen them. And there was like, it actually led me down a path um, to, to this area. And I was like, huh, I shouldn't give up. I'm, I'm being told I shouldn't give up. And so I, I went over the weekend and put posters up on, along this path where people claim to have seen the dog. And, um, I, on that Monday, I, I took a walk down this path, calling Micah's name. And I swear I heard Micah answering me. And he has a distinctive bark and um, he kind of coos a little bit. So I knew it was him. Um, but how do you tell anyone? In, in, no one would answer the door in this house. So, but I knew Micah was there. 
and um, and it's not close by. So it was a little ways off. And all I could think of is God somehow through my neighbors led me down this path. The next Tuesday, a week later, I just knew my dog was in the house. So I called animal control. And within an hour, my dog was back home. It was an amazing story. Awesome. I don't know how it happened, but I could feel it led to go find my gun. Wow. Selfies and everything. <laughs> I'm assuming. That's a great thought story. Anybody else? Thank you for sharing, Lisa. Yeah, just raise, raise your hand if you have anything. Yes, Shana. Well, I'd just like to say that I rejoice in knowing my purpose. I feel like um, I've done, you know, I train my dog, and when they do the right thing, you praise them. And um, when I do the right thing, like regarding my God given talents and using them in the way I feel like I'm supposed to, I, um, I don't know, I feel like I rejoice for that. It doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it feels really good. Thank you. I'll pass with that. Yeah. Thank you, Shana. Awesome. Anybody else? Yes, Dio. Okay, it might be a little hard to hear me, but I wanted to share something with you. Today is um, is Hispanic Heritage Month, and I'm downtown with my wife celebrating a little bit, but the parade is about to start. There's thousands of people waiting for the parade to start, but they're here to rejoice in their heritage and what they believe in, and I think it's just an awesome thing to kind of like bring some of that to you, to have that sense of pride, that sense of love. And it all stems back from God. And we have to just remember, we have to start with ourselves and start with that love. And I just wanted to share just a little bit of that, you know, um, all the people just kind of getting together on the street, you probably can't see that well, but they're here, enjoy. Yeah, super cool for uh, the Hispanic heritage. Um, yeah, thanks for sharing that. Anybody else? Uh, Jan and then Chris. Hey, everybody. Um, I just want to piggyback on Shana's, even though we're not supposed to cross talk. I just feel as if I, too, have fallen into a space where I'm, I'm appreciating what I bring, you know? And that I, you know, don't make money and it's not a career, but um, I'm redoing this prayer garden and I'm following spirit every single day. And it was going to be like a money-making thing, but now it's a prayer garden and spirit's directing me. And um, I'm painting 22-year-old chairs right now. And last service, I cleaned my bathroom sink and cleaned my little things around my bathroom sink while we were talking about faith. And I really saw how my faith can get really dusty and dirty and cluttered. And when I cleaned my sacred objects and I placed them with consciousness, I just was like, wow, that's just like my faith. I can actually clean it up and put it in a place of honor. And um, it just felt really good. So I don't have lists, even though I do have lists, but I don't follow them. I just trust that spirit is going to put me in the right place at the right time to do what I need to do. And today I'm painting some chairs and um, it's really beautiful. Prayers for the farm I need and redoing the greenhouse and trying to get the harvest in all by myself. And, you know, but I trust somehow, some way, you know, we're going to be taken care of here. And uh, it's beautiful to be here with you all. Thank you, Jan, for sure. Uh, thanks for joining. Even, you know, I love that you multitask and uh, stay on stay on with us. We love it. We love yeah. seeing you, Jan. It's awesome. Well, I uh, Chris, uh, you had your hand up? Yes. Hi, everybody. It's great to see everyone. I'm sorry I missed 
last week. I was away at a wedding. Um, but I, I wanted to say that this week I, I did have an experience where um, I was trying to figure out what my purpose was. And um, I mean, about, you know, spiritual growth. And I think a lot of it has to do with people for me. Um, I, uh, I was in the stop and shop preparing for some friends coming. And um, there was this woman, she had a broken arm and she um, was in a, you know, in, in a, not a cast, but a, uh, one of those things to hold her arm up. And she, she couldn't get her groceries going or she couldn't get around. She was in real distress. So I, I went out to her, I said, can I help you? She said, yeah. She said, I, uh, you know, I don't have a ride. I live in Long Meadow. I just came from my doctor's office and, um, you know, she was very disorientated. So um, she said, I'm just running out of my power on my phone. I don't even, my phone's going out. And she was, you know, so finally I helped her with um, getting her a lift and then the lift wasn't coming and we called a taxi. And I just, I just realized that I, I do have this thing where I, um, I, I, you know, people, she, she had lost all hope. She was like, I don't know, you know, how I'm going to get home or anything. And I felt, I just felt so good assisting her and feeling like I could help her get the taxi get, well, she, the lift didn't come and she was trying to get the lift, but she didn't have enough um, juice in her phone to get, you know, to follow the lift. So we called a taxi and finally the taxi in Northampton came and um, she also got the lift too. So she was, by the time I finished, shopping she had got her her um lift and she was home but she was in the but i just felt good about that that there was something i could do to to help this woman and uh, i felt that god was there to for me to be in on purpose and um so that's kind of my spiritual story for this week that i was able to help her because i had broken my arm and i knew what it was like to have to walk around with a broken arm and your groceries so um, anyway, that's my story of the week. I, I guess it has to do with, you know, counting my blessings so that I can help people. So that's what I wanted to share. Thank you. Yeah. Amen, Chris. Thank you for sharing. So important. Uh, yeah. So, well, that's, that's great. Uh, Karen, uh, do you have something? I have just one more. <laughs> I am rejoicing that my 24 year old is growing up. And I would also um, appreciate prayers for her learning to be an adult because she's having a lot of trouble in her first job right now and may have to switch jobs soon. Um, and it's her first big career job and she's really struggling. So her name is Megan. Karen, your, uh, your electronics is kind of fading away, but we got the gist of it. So thank you for that. and. So, um, yeah, friends, uh, we're going to circle into uh, prayers. Um, I'm going to ask for prayers for my, my cousins, uh, my cousin Wanda um, and, and her health situation and, my, and our uh, friend Matt, who gets on uh, Faith Ways and Matt's just had his third session with chemo and um, you know, he's got a long haul ahead of him, so it could use all of our prayers. Um, I have the, um, you know, immigrants, of course, to the United States that you guys brought up, but also, you know, immigrants throughout the world, because uh, just as sometimes they're treated poorly in the United States, they're treated poorly in other parts of the world as well. Um, and uh, prayers for Bojangles, uh, prayers for those for Ukraine, and also, I guess, for the people in Russia that aren't necessarily pro-war. Prayers for justice in our country, which sometimes just seems so elusive right now. Uh, prayers and blessings for Hispanic heritage. And let us lift up uh, those of other, um, those of mixed or whatever, uh, whatever your ba background is. But celebrating it is super important. Um, you know, Thanks to God for the return of Micah. Um, what a blessing that is. And then, um, you know, for prayers uh, for keeping our faith uncluttered. Um, and finally, uh, and, but, not, but not, not finally, but lastly, is prayers for, um, the, for the farms and for those of us. So friends, let us pray. Oh God, 
God of wonder, we turn to you for your help. We turn to you for your grace. We turn to you for your mercy. We know no other place to turn, oh God, but we know that you are there. We know that you have heard our prayers today. We know that you are part of this service. We know you are a part of us when we are not in service, when we're not at our best. God, we ask you to also be there for those things that we hold so deep in our hearts and in our souls that we're so worried about or concerned with that we can't even share them because they're just so hard to share. But we know that you know these, God, and we thank you for that. Uh, help to make us a light for those who need light in their darkness throughout the world. Help us to grow from helping others. Help us to rejoice in you. Help us to find ways to rejoice in you at every moment of every day. That we can grow to become powerful as your loved child. All in Jesus' name. We thank you, oh God. Amen. And now, friends, I invite you all to unmute and join in our messy Lord's Prayer. You can do it however you see fit. And uh, if you wish to join us, we would love it. If not, it's up to you. But it goes something like this. Our Father, our Father art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is, and this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. We do not into temptations. Deliver us from evil. Time is able. Power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Man, all right, that awesome. I'm gonna um mute everyone again. Again, not uh, not because we don't love you. Uh, it just makes it easier for people to hear. If you do want to speak, just raise your hand. Um, I forgot a prayer that is an important one. Um, uh, a friend of ours, one uh, someone who gets on uh, oftentimes on on faith Facebook, um, Kathy Shea, uh, lost her sister, um. And we had her service this past week, Sherry Mechtow. And, um, you know, it was really sad. It was a lot of people that Sherry was the kind of person that I believe rejoiced in the Lord and had, uh, as a result, there was a lot of people that really relied on her and her, uh, her faith and, and her loving ways. And um, she was really a special person. I didn't personally know her, but the more I learned about her, um, she really brought God's light to the world. So uh, prayers for um, the, the Shea family and the Mechtow family, and there's other family names involved, but for Sherry and her family and friends, and God bless them all. Um, and thank you for our Lord's Prayer, which I love, and now is our time of communion. And I'm, I'm grateful for our communion, and our communion is this big thing, and, and it's an important thing, but we do it a little different uh, with faith ways. And um, I've done it a few times in the big church <laughs> recently, and uh, you have to remember a lot more things than uh, you do when, you're, we're, when we're sort of winging it the way we sometimes do. And one of the reasons we want to wing it is because we want to explain it in ways that can make it accessible to you. Um, this is a little liturgy that I had uh, written before, and I wanted to just share it with you today as we do our communion. Um, O oh God, our provider, creator, and loving parent, thine is the glory, the power, and the way forever. Give us our daily bread and release our souls as we release others. Protect us, O oh God, and shield us from harm. We come today through our communion service to celebrate our oneness in you. The cup of life. We give thanks for this life-giving nectar, the fruit, O oh God, of your vine. 
may it course through our bodies, offering healing and nurturing and fertile substance for our hearts and souls. Let this reveal to us the essence of your servant, Jesus Christ. Bread of life, the sustaining bread of life, broken that we may be forever reminded of the sacrifice of loving others. May this bread sustain our hunger and fill us with divine light that we may be enlightened to your ever presence and want no more. Oh God, we ask you to bless this bread, bless these elements, bless this group of people who come before you in Jesus' name. Oh God, entwine us with this meal. Make this meal weave us together as one. Have this meal offered to any who partake and let not one of us be above another, nor let us not be beneath another. For in this meal, we become equals. Brothers, sisters, and others, in Jesus' name, amen. Cup and bread of life. Let us pray. Thank you, O oh God, for this sustaining meal, for this gathering where we come together. Help us learn to rejoice in you. Help us learn to put aside hate. Help us learn to forgive. Help us learn to be real about who we are. And in that way, rejoice in you through music and prayer and fellowship and love, through breaking bread and coming together. Let us practice rejoicing in you, oh God. Amen. Thank you. And friends, just a reminder um, about our offering um, that we are called to give more than money. We're called to give of ourselves. Today, I've heard some stories of where people sort of went out of their way to help other people. I think today, if you were to look around at our at our sacred space and, and hear some of the stories that have been told over this course of the service, you'll hear how each one of us, even outside of this, touches one another, where we continue to touch one another and continue to help each other grow along spiritual lines. And so uh, that is what we ask for our offering. Um, is We do have a reminder that we have this, um, the neighbor fund, and um, that we invite you to seek those who need help, um, there are some parameters around it, but our goal is to use the money until we have none and then try to get more <laughs> so we can keep helping people. Um, so bring it on, baby. And uh, let us pray. Oh, God, we ask you to uh, accept us as our living offering to you. Do with us as you wish. Help us to become your vessel of change for the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, so we have time for a song, a benediction, and maybe one more song. So let's see what we got. Joseph, anybody? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Oh, Lance, what a beautiful uh, sermon it was today. And uh, yes, yes, it's true. I have joined a uh, Kirtan band. Kirtan is Hindu devotional music that involves a call and response where the Kirtan leader says a mantra and then the, audi the audience, the uh, congregation says it back. Um, so maybe uh, in the future, if uh, people are interested in that, we could do a little of that and actually we can do it in English and we can actually, there are some Christian centered Kirtan practices that we could do. So, uh, uh, you know, not to make anyone comfortable doing uh, uh, Sanskrit mantras. Om. In the meantime, uh, Lance, what a great reminder that oh, I think it's here. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. 
And we pray that all unity may someday be restored. And they'll know we are Christian by our love, by our love. Yeah, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work hand in hand. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll save each person's dignity. Save each person's pride. And they'll know we are Christian. Our love by our love. Yeah, they'll know we are Christians by our love by our love. Yeah, they'll know. Thank you so much, Joseph. That was terrific. I have for you the benediction for this morning. And the benediction is by John O'Donohue. And in light of what we've been talking about, it's called For Celebration. Now is the time to free the heart. Let all intentions and worries stop. Free the joy inside the self. Awaken to the wonder of your life. Open your eyes and see the friends whose hearts recognize your face as kin, whose kindness watchful and near encourages you to live everything here. See the gifts the years have given things your effort could never earn, the help to enjoy who you want to be and the mind to mirror mystery. Amen. Go in peace, all of you, and have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thanks for joining us today. I love doing this every week. I'll see everybody next week. God love you all. Take Thank care. You. You're awesome, Bye -bye, everybody. Thank you, Chris. It's good to see you back and, and Tim and, and um, Lisa uh, healing for you, but it is nice to see you. I hate to have you sick just to see us, but <laughs> Bev, great to see you. you. And Absolutely. Deb, thanks for sharing, Deb. That was, that meant a that lot. That was terrific. Oh, thank you. Thanks for the encouragement. Really meaningful. Yeah. 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 Thank, thank you so much. It yeah, added quite a bit. Uh, John, you too, and Chris. And <laughs> It looks like a great parade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. I love it. I love it. Everybody, love you. We need more celebrating. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.